the more that I've been thinking about these two new Archer commanders coming to rise of kingdoms, the more I feel like these commanders as a pair might be really good for free to play players. So today we're going to go over five reasons why I think that this new Archer pair could be really, really good for free to play players. But first what's going on guys. Cheers before we jump in if you appreciate theory crafting and guide videos for free to play players make sure you drop a thumbs up on this video that's what's going to tell me that i should make more videos like this and also consider subscribing to the channel we are now officially on the road to 100 000 subscribers we left 75k in the dust our sights are set on six figures so consider subbing and double check to make sure you are you might think you are but you're not okay now with all that out of the way i do just want to make very clear that this video is theory crafting right we don't even have the numbers for these commander skills yet so everything that we talk about this video is just theory crafting and preparing for the release of these new commanders and what we might expect when they come into the game but i do think we know enough about these new commanders and their mechanics to make some educated guesses on how they might perform the only thing that i'm going to assume throughout this video is that the general damage output of these commanders is similar to what we already have in the meta today right i think that's a fair assumption although we obviously don't know for sure without the numbers here and also considering the fact that both of these commanders have mighty healing it could be the the case that their damage output is a little bit lower to make up for the fact that they are a little bit more tanky right like we saw that with Richard unfortunately Richard's damage output was really low and so he really was never PvP viable after like kvk1 pretty much so I hope that the developers wouldn't make that same mistake with these new commanders I think it would be a bit unfortunate if they basically revitalized healing as a mechanic just to make these commanders you know have low damage output and make them horrible so just understand that with these five things we're going to talk about I'm assuming that the damage output of these commanders will be relatively similar to what we see in the field already in terms of damage output and even if the damage output of these commanders is a little bit lower like maybe 10 percent lower than the other commanders i think that would still be fine now let's jump into the first reason why i think these two commanders as a pair could be really good for free to play players and that is because if you guys understand how a lot of the damage is done in the open field these days you'll know that a majority of your damage is done from your active skill right typically it is your single skill shot or your aoe or whatever the case might be and that's a lot of your damage now there's exceptions of course if you look at commanders like Alexander the Great he has an instant proc and that's going to be a large chunk of his damage but for the most part a lot of your damage is not from normal attacks and counter attacks again if you're running Attila Decade or something like that that's an exception most commanders though get most of their damage from the active skills on the commanders and what we know from both of these commanders the second commander having to be the secondary commander but we know that these active skills are going to be dealing true damage and we can see based on what's written here that true damage is not affected by damage bonuses the attacking troops attack attribute or the defending troops defense attribute so what this means is if the active skill of these commanders is going to account for a majority of their damage output just like we currently see in open field meta then free-to-play players aren't going to necessarily have to worry about getting really good gear and armaments for this commander pair right like we don't have to worry about having any attack stat at all on this set it doesn't matter at all it will not move the needle for the true damage now having lower attack will lower your normal attack so your counter attacks and basic attacks and everything like that but again if we assume that the majority of your damage output will be from the active skill and your active skill does not need attack at all it's completely ignored then the only sets that you care about for this commander pairing and this pairing specifically because they are both true damage commanders it's not like one is skill and one's not they're both true damage so neither commander cares about the attack stat well if that's the case then let's take a look at some of the best pieces of gear that you can be using for this army because the golden age here gives you archer defense okay and if it's talented it's going to be 17 percent, which is really nice and if you look at the upgrades for that slot you have hydra's blast and dragon's breath bow those also give you archer defense it's a bit more admittedly than the 17 percent for golden age but it's nothing crazy and then if we move on to the helmet slot you have the revival helm here which is nice you get some archer defense and most players would eventually replace it with either the dragon's breath helm or the kvk helmet ancestral mask of night but these give you attack stat and so by actually upgrading from the epic piece you would be trading defense which is valuable to you for attack which is actually useless for your active skill it is literally doing nothing for your active skill this would only increase your white numbers right the normal attack damage and so you actually would be probably better off running the purple helmet here 
as opposed to the legendary pieces right if we look at chest equipment we wouldn't want to run the revival plate chest because that gives archer attack so we could run the commander's heavy armor until we get our hands on the milky way which gives you a bunch of archer health and then you're good to go you don't have to worry about well i mean i guess you could get the dragon's breath plate if you wanted to but the milky way is a piece that you can get for free from opening crystal keys now it's rare but you can get it and if we move on to the gloves we see something similar we have archer attack for the purple piece and if we look at some of the legendary pieces ian's choice and dragon's breath van braces both have archer attack which for the most part you won't need so you could run the leather gloves until you get your hands on the gauntlets of glorious goddess for the legs you can rock the revival greaves because they give you defense points and you wouldn't want to upgrade to the dragon's breath tacits because that gives you archer attack and same thing with the tacits of the war god also archer attack so you can literally just use the purple piece and do better until you can get your hands on the legs of the glorious goddess here for some extra tube health and if we look at the boots well the flame treads the purple piece gives you archer health right away now you could have eventually upgrade them if you wanted to to the dragon's breath boots but that would be kind of a side grade or you could go for the again the leadership boots as well but the purple boots are just fine so at the end of the day you could run something like this and I feel like you would actually be like completely fine and now of course you could run the archer chest piece if you wanted to and you could upgrade the boots you know like I said to the leadership boots and you could eventually get the leadership gloves as well and maybe when kbk comes around you get some extra defense in that slot here but like I don't know maybe I'm missing something here but it seems like it's going to be really Really easy to build a quality set of equipment for this new archer pair because you don't have to worry about getting a lot of attack stat at all and when it comes to formations here yes you would probably want to run the circle formation but again when it comes to individual armaments you don't really care about attack stat so that's like an entire stat that you can completely ignore if that slot is something you don't care about it doesn't really matter it probably won't increase your damage output very significantly at all anyway so you would just stack health and you would stack defense here and you could even take March speed in that top slot and feel really good about that now following that same logic we can move on to reason number two why these new commanders might be really good for free-to-play players and that has to do with crystal tech now if you guys are familiar with crystal tech then you'll know that all of the stats that you get from crystal tech are actually just attack and so if this commander pair doesn't really care about attack at least for what we're assuming is going to be a majority of their damage if it's coming from true damage then really you don't have to invest that much at all in your archer attack stat you can just leave it at the bare minimum for whatever it needs to be to progress further in your crystal tech right there's no other stats here you don't get any health you don't get any defense or anything from any of this crystal tech upgrades and even things like attack formation like this is a really expensive upgrade and yet Yes, it is a bottleneck eventually you'll have to do this but if this is a little bit lower for your first few fights then it doesn't really matter that much for this army specifically now you will want to have this for your other army so it's not like you can avoid this completely unless you're only running this one March but it'll matter less for free-to-play players than anybody else the only stats you would really care about are going to be March speed and also troop capacity right which is always the case you always care about these stats more than pretty much anything honestly but you don't care about the end of the tree right you don't care about improved morale because increased damage doesn't work for this new true damage right at least based on what they wrote and said to us so far we'll have to actually test this to see if what they said was accurate but you won't care about improved morale and you also won't care about surprise strike not that free to play players really would get here anyway but I'm just saying you're not missing out on anything over here by not getting it and so even for free to play players who are only running like let's say you only run this archer March as your only archer March and you run like infantry and calves or whatever you can still kind of change how you think about crystal tech investment and pretty much completely avoid all of the archer ones right and just save them for last because you're not going to get as much value out of it as you would for your infantry or for your cavalry right so again it's not to say that crystal tech will be useless for free-to-play players but they can kind of plan around not needing the attack for their archers as much which could help them in the long run at least for maybe the earlier fights in kbk and they can put those crystals somewhere else moving on to reason number three why this commander pair might be really good for free-to-play players if it is viable for free-to-play players to use this commander pairing with lower stats and still be effective then what you actually have with this second commander that was revealed this is the archer versatility and skill tree commander this commander actually has on their third skill aoe healing okay you're mighty healing up to three nearby allies so you're supporting your your alliance and your allies and your other armies 
but also on the expertise here you're also giving your nearby friendly troops that are healed more defense and more normal damage right and so really this commander being an open field commander is quite supportive in nature even though they don't have the support tree here they have some nice support in the open field which i think is really cool so not only are you going to be able to deal decent amounts of damage in theory without a ton of attack stat but you're going to have sustain to stay in the open field for a long time because both of these commanders have mighty healing and they're both pretty tanky especially if you're running this commander as the primary you have the defense tree as well which is really cool so while you're being tanky and you're sustaining yourself in the open field you're also dealing decent damage and supporting nearby allies by giving them defense normal damage and some healing to keep them on the battlefield for longer and this seems like a win-win right now even if we assume that like your damage output isn't going to be as high as like you know the mega whales like surely they're still probably going to be insane it still gives you a role and you still can feel like you are supporting and doing something while still doing damage you're making sure that your nearby allies perform a little bit better now again we don't know these numbers so it could be that they gain two percent defense and one percent normal damage it could be something awful right it could be nothing at all to be really worried about and this healing factor here could be super low to where it literally doesn't matter but in theory it seems to be the case that you should be able to deal decent damage without a ton of attack stat and be supportive for your nearby allies as a free-to-play player and I think that that's really good you have a good role and you feel like you can contribute in a meaningful way even if you aren't spending in rise of kingdoms moving on to reason number four we have to talk about what both of these commanders are doing and in particular the first commander this is unfortunately probably going to be the mightiest governor commander but this commander has a five target aoe and they have mighty healing this commander has mighty healing and we have a bonus to healing factor on the fourth skill here which means this commander and especially this commander pair should be really good for chaining barbarians out in the world right if this is a circular aoe which we don't know at the time of recording this but if it's a circular aoe or even a half circle aoe you're getting tons of healing aoe damage a little bit of sustain and i mean both these commanders have march speed as well and a lot of this first commander's kit works in the open field all of this commander's kit works in the open field as well and it's going to be buffing your other chaining marches which is going to be really cool and healing them right you're going to be healing multiple chaining marches all at once and so for free-to-play players who get a lot of value out of chaining this could be like the best chaining march that you have now of course we have huo who's great for chaining like he has so much healing factor it's amazing and there's tons of other circular aoe commanders and so like it's not like we needed a commander like this but it certainly seems like it's kind of built for that right i mean you have the aoe you have double healing you have bonus to healing and you have buffing your other chaining marches i don't know to me it seems like this would be a great pair again depending on the numbers for chaining barbarians out in the world chaining marauders especially during kvk i feel like you can get a lot of your investment back in the form of gems if you really grind out with this pair over you know a couple of kvks and the fifth and final reason why i think that this commander pair could be really good for free to play players has to do with how mighty healing works in rise of kingdoms now i made a video a few days ago with the help of speco where we pretty much figured out almost exactly the mighty healing formula in rise of kingdoms and how it scales the only thing we don't know is if there is a cap on mighty healing which we'll have to figure out when these new commanders come into the game but what we discovered from mighty healing and this is true for regular healing as well so this is this is like set in stone we know this as a fact what we know is that the lower your base health the more you heal right and so what that means is you're going to get a higher amount of units healed if you run t4 compared to tier 5. now of course you could stretch this even further and go to tier 3 tier 2 tier 1 etc but i feel like tier 4 is a pretty good middle ground where you still have a lot of damage output and sustained from the decent amount of stats like people use people use tier 4 in the open field already like it's just something that people do to save on hospital bills myself included using tier 4 in the field is not this absurd thing like people are already doing that but in the case of these new archer commanders because of how healing works in the game and how true damage is dealt from both of these commanders it seems like you would actually probably prefer to run tier four units when it comes to the true damage output now as far as your overall trades and everything like that that is something that we have to actually test when they come into the game but if we're just strictly looking at true damage output okay because your true damage output is dependent on a percentage of your healing strength then the more units you are healing the more true damage you're going to be dealing and you can heal more units 
by going from tier five to tier four okay and so in that way you'll be dealing more true damage with tier four than tier five and even if the trade-off is that you know your march is going to get melted a little bit quicker well at least you don't have to worry about the healing cost of tier five right like that's a big problem for a lot of free-to-play players it's just so expensive to train and heal tier five units and so if you have this new archer pair and you can reasonably run it with tier four units well then you can focus on training more tier five calves and infantry and save those resources for those troop types knowing that your archers can perform just fine with tier four units now again this is all theory crafting so we'll have to see how these commanders actually perform when they come into rise of kingdoms but unless this wording is wrong or they change how mighty healing works which i don't think they will because it's already in the game we already know how it works it seems like this commander pair is going to be great for using tier four units and i think that means that this is going to be great for free to play players so just to sum this up if we assume that both of these commanders have a majority of their damage output coming from true damage that means that the only stats they really care about are your heal strength your march speed your troop capacity for damage output and then you would want some defense and health just for general sustained purposes but you don't care about attack and because you don't care about attack it should be a bit easier for you to build a decent or at least field viable set of gear and armaments for this pair you won't really care that much about archer attack from a crystal tech perspective and both of these commanders are going to be great for chaining in kvk as well and even if your damage output is a little bit lower you're still going to be supporting your nearby allies and using tier four units to do so so your hospital bills are going to be a bit cheaper so all in all i'm really excited to see what the actual numbers are for these commanders and hopefully we get that information very soon and as soon as i'm able to provide that information to you guys i'm going to make a video about it so if you don't want to miss that make sure you subscribe to the channel and click the bell to be notified the next time i upload a rise of kingdoms video and let me know while you're down there in the comment section below what you think is going to be the case with these new archers do you think that they're going to be meta do you think that they might be a little bit weaker but they could be really good value for free to play players like we've talked about in this video i'd love to hear your thoughts down below and while you're down there consider dropping a thumbs up on the video it really helps out the channel a ton it helps get this video out into the youtube algorithm so other rise of kingdoms players might see it and with that being said guys thank you so much for watching this has been omniarch i will talk to you guys again soon peace